gone from summer to winter. <clears throat> Sometimes, am I a meteorologist? <laughs> That's what I think. Good morning. If you are still in bed, I don't blame you. It was 51 degrees when I got in my car. And I know that is not cold to a lot of people. We have some duck hunters that come down from Wisconsin, Annie. And she always says, it is not cold down here. And I have on everything and she has on nothing. You know, so... Yes, we are running a little late this morning. Good morning, Nano. Um, I'm just tired. You know, sometimes you just get tired. And Jay kept saying, you gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get going, and I was going, but whatever. So, anyway, first I want to thank everyone for the birthday wishes, like everybody says after their birthday. There is nothing like a Facebook birthday. Um, can you imagine if you had a birthday party with all those people? Would that not be fun to have everybody there? There are people, to me, it's the one thing about the Facebook birthday is there are so many people, too, that are on Facebook that you never get to see and you haven't heard from in years. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I was friends with them when I was in kindergarten or I was friends with them in college. And that's just the neatest thing to be able to do that. So this morning, I didn't even start drinking my coffee yet and I'm freezing. This morning, my three little words are the true fan. And the reason why I chose that is last week I had the opportunity to speak at the Hope Lodge. And if you don't know what the Hope Lodge is, the Hope Lodge is a home that is run by the 20th Century Club. They're all over the United States, but this one is in Little Rock. And the 20th Century Club raises money for such an awesome cause um, for the Hope Lodge. And it allows cancer patients to stay there while they are doing treatment. So if you live so many miles outside of the Little Rock area, you can apply to stay there. And it is awesome. It has a kitchen. They have food for these people. They have their own suites. And it is just the best thing. So I got to go talk to them. And a lot of times I don't know what... I'm going to talk about when I talk about things and I had had my whole spiel done and then I thought you know that's not where I'm going to go with this because Lauren had talked about she and Stringer had gone to the Tech football game because Tech played Stringer played football at Tech when he was in college that's where he went and it was homecoming and all his teammates were there and they were just there for him. If he needed a bottle of water, they would get it. He didn't even have to ask. If he needed a chair, they would get a chair. And I started thinking about that, and I thought that is exactly what our book is about. Our book is about the team approach to cancer. However, it can be just such a life lesson that I want to talk to you about this morning, because when we talk about the cancer patient in the Game On book, we talk about the patient being in the middle, then you have the caregiver, then you have the cheerleader, and then you have the fan. And in life, most of us fall in the fan category. And let me talk to you a minute about the fan because when I was at a Whitehall basketball game, I noticed what different types of fans there were. And there's three different types of fans. One is the what's the score fan. And they aren't there at all for the ball game. They are there for the food and the fellowship. They don't care what the score is. They don't even care who's playing. They probably don't even know who's playing. So that is the what's the score fan. Usually they're even just kind of there to be nosy, to be in the loop. Then you also have the I'm not sure fan. And the I'm not sure fans are very hesitant to do anything during the ball game. They don't know whether they should cheer. They don't know whether they should go to the concession stand. They really don't know what they should do. And you know, we've all been that in that in both of those places, probably, I'd hate to say that I was ever a, was the score fan, but we've all been in the situation of not so sure fan because sometimes we don't know what to do and that's okay. And then the third fan is the true fan. And those are those fans, they bleed the color of their team just like Leslie's grandfather does, just like Daddy Jack does, just like Jay does. They are there for the team 100%. Whether you are winning, whether you are losing, they are there. And you know, that day when Lauren and Stringer went to that tech ball game, they realized who the true fans are. And I wanna to talk to you a minute because that's what I want all of us to strive to be. 
the true fan because really isn't that what God intended us to be he intended for us to serve others and yesterday Dr. Eddie Horde talked about the stewardship campaign and he said something that I just loved he said you can either be a spoon or a ladle and I thought about a soup kitchen and when we go to a soup kitchen or even when we eat soup you eat spoon you eat soup you serve yourself that's what Eddie said but when you have a ladle you serve others and that's what God intended us to do. So when we turn to the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, 3, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And that is another thing when we serve. We have to serve with our whole heart. It is not just that we serve, it's that we are a true fan, fan for the right reason. We bleed that color because we are doing it with our whole heart. And Rick Warren said this in one of his articles, God is more interested in your why you serve than how well you serve. God wants us to serve willingly and eagerly out of love for Jesus and gratitude for all he's done. You are most like Jesus when you are helping others. After washing his disciples' feet, Jesus said, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. And isn't that amazing? We are supposed to serve with our whole heart. We are supposed to be that true fan. We are supposed to be there for the right reason. It's not when we serve, it is how we serve. And we should serve with a label, a label, with a ladle, because we don't serve with a spoon. So that's what I want you to strive to do this week. So the challenges of the week are this. Keep your daily appointment with Christ. Dive deep in the Word. And practice being a true fan. Serve others with love. Because that's what Jesus intended us to do. And remember to fill your cup with Christ because it's only when you fill your cup with Christ that you can fill other cups with Christ. If you'll pray with me this morning. Dear God, we come to you with open hearts and open minds, willing to serve you however we should serve you. We are opening our heart for you to lead the way to all of those who need us so we can be their true fan. We can serve them over abundantly with a ladle, giving them exactly what they need to help them press on through the days that are ahead. We remember as you told us in 1 Peter 4.10 that you have gifted us with many talents that we are to use. Help all of us find our talents to serve others enabling us to serve with a whole heart. Be with all of those that are stepping on the road this week, not knowing what leads ahead because it's not for our understanding to know. We should not ask why, we should just follow your lead. Be with all of those who have been given a diagnosis that was not of their choosing. Be with all of those that are just struggling. Lead us to those to serve them as their true fan. In your name we pray, amen. Once again, thank you for joining us for Coffee with Cup Cupcake. I cannot talk this morning. Also, thank you for the birthday wishes. You can go to personalpeprally.org and you can find the commentary for today. You can also sign up for our email list. I started my Game Changer campaign like I started last year on my birthday. I started it again this year. I didn't do any donation campaign because I raise money all year long for cancer patients. When you give... To us, you are adopting a cancer patient to receive joy mail for a whole year when you give your donation $100 or more or $150. It is up to you. We will take anything because every little bit makes a difference in someone's life, like I said, who was given a diagnosis that was not of their choosing. We pray for all of you this week, no matter what you are dealing with, and we hope to see you next week on Coffee with Cupcake. You have a great day.
great day and a great week.